Hi, this is Terry Couty. I am the founder and director of Deep Sea Foundation. I'd like to welcome you to our educational channel where we talk about topics related to breast cancer and breast reconstruction. My guest today is Dr. Hania Bednarski, and she and I met this spring at the American Society of Breast Surgeons Conference. Dr. Bednarski is a board certified general surgeon who is fellowship trained in oncoplastic breast surgery. She is also a breast cryoablation specialist and has been doing this procedure since 2013. Her goal at her private practice called Serenity Surgery and Wellness is to reduce the footprint of surgery. She performs many different procedures, including cryo cryoablation, biopsies, tumor and lump resections, reconstructive surgery, breast reductions, and minimally invasive procedures. She loves to educate patients of all ages who are scared or anxious about breast cancer or who simply want to improve their lifestyles. Her patients are presented with all their options and given the opportunity to feel whole again. She's with her patients each step of the way, providing individualized care because each journey is unique. And she treats patients with dignity and respect to make them feel like they belong. I love her tagline. She is all boobies all the time. <laughs> Dr. Benarski, welcome to the uh, educational channel. And I'm so happy that we could reconnect after the conference in April because it was such a pleasure to talk to you then. Oh, it's so wonderful to meet you, Terry, and thank you so much for having me on. You are very welcome. You know, the term de-escalation was a hot topic at the conference, so I'm going to let you just dive right in to this topic that you've been doing for a while, cryoablation. It's fascinating, and patients need to know about it as an option for surgery. Absolutely. Absolutely. So cryoablation is freezing of tumors, simply put. And cryotherapy in one way or another has been around for many, many years. Um, believe it or not, in 2500 BC, Egyptians knew that using cold would help with inflammation and infection control and bleeding control. And then Hippocrates used um, cold therapy and then uh, in the night, actually right after World War II, liquid nitrogen um, started to be used as a gaseous substance that, that could actually cool off cryoprobes. And the current cryoprobe is based off of, um, the original prototype was uh, done in the 1950s by a duo of an engineer and a physician. And it had three chambers. And that cryoprobe has been, um, has been uh, reassessed and progressed to the cryoprobe that we use currently. So the way that we do cryoblation is with the use, in, in my case, of ultrasound, although there are some uh, cryoablation applications that can be used with uh, CT scan. But in my case, it's with the use of ultrasound. And in breast surgery cases, it's with the use of ultrasound. And once we find the tumor, we place the probe through the tumor. And then there are uh, three cycles. So there's a freeze cycle followed by a thaw cycle, and then a third, and then a second freeze cycle. And once that procedure is done, the tumor cells are dead. So it's a really wonderful application. It's done in the office under local anesthesia. And for the right patient, it's a fantastic um, alternative to breast cancer surgery. So for breast tumors specifically, in 2002, we got FDA approval for using cryoablation with fibroadenomas, so benign breast tumors. And we've been studying cryoablation for breast cancer 
or since about 2013, right around the time that I first started to get involved with using cryoablation for breast tumors. And since that time, there have been several studies. So there was a study called the FROST trial that was the original mm -hmm. trial. And most recently, the ICE-3 trial has been um, under progress. And we're hoping to get FDA approval probably in 2024, um, as we right now using the ICE-3 literature and the ICE-3 patients and kind of coming to terms with exactly what we need for FDA approval. So super exciting, definitely de-escalating um, what we do in the operating room, because in this case, we're actually not even in the operating room. This is an in-office procedure. And patients do really beautifully. Now, right now, as far as um, what the studies have been done for is very specific tumors. Right. So in the FROST trial, the original trial, mm -hmm. all of the patients were over 70, the tumors were uh, less than a centimeter, and all of them were ER positive, HER2 negative, um, and very what we call favorable tumors. With the follow-up that patients would have MRIs, mammograms, ultrasounds, every six months for a certain amount of time. They would have a biopsy at six months after the procedure to make sure that in fact, the cancer cells are dead and that they would be followed very closely. They would still have all of the other adjunctive therapies that are recommended for breast cancer care. Mm -hmm. So when we think about cryoablation, this truly just is in place of a partial mastectomy or a lumpectomy. It does not take the place of radiation. It does not take the place of endocrine therapy if the patient is recommended to have anti-hormone medications such as tamoxifen or an um, arom uh, aromatase inhibitor. So those things are still necessary, but it does take out the surgery part of things. Now, ICE-3 has gotten a little bit more lax with the guidelines. So for the ICE-3 trial, women are over 60, tumors are 1.5 centimeters and smaller. Okay. Um, and again, still estrogen receptor positive, HER2 negative, favorable tumors um, that are ultrasound visible. Yeah. So it's really exciting. Um, you know, these are the guidelines that we're putting in front of the FDA. Now, Interestingly, you know, the more that we do these procedures, the more that we feel increasingly comfortable with the possibility of doing this procedure on maybe larger tumors or tumors that are in fact HER2 positive or tumors that um, even, you know, stage zero, so DCIS, mm -hmm. if we can see it on ultrasound, we should yeah. be able to use cryoablation for that. So really exciting, you know, we're really progressing very quickly with the knowledge and getting a lot of good information for women so that we can give them an alternative. Yeah. You know, this, uh, you gave such a comprehensive overview. I have notes down here. I, <laughs> you covered it all, but I do have one quick question. Um, yeah. be, because you, you did talk about the time frame. Tell us about recovery. What have patients been talking about in terms of the recovery or even the aesthetic outcomes? To me, that that's almost a given after, after everything that you told me. Yeah. So the amazing thing is, is that the recovery is really fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, we do this with the same, in many cases, we can actually use the same incision that was used for the ultrasound guided biopsy. Right. If not, then the incision that we use is also about five millimeters. So mm -hmm. these are tiny incisions. So essentially scar free. Um, they are the cryoablation. So we do use obviously anesthetic for insertion of the probe, sure. but then during cryoablation, the freezing action 
and also acts as an as another anesthetic. Mm -hmm. So the procedure is essentially pain free. Um, immediately after the procedure, there's a significant amount of swelling. And the swelling is from several different things. Number one is the body's inflammatory response. So sure. we rely on the fact that the body's inflama inflammatory response, the inflammation cells, the mm -hmm. macrophages, and the T cells, the B cells are going to go in and clean up the area. That influx of fluid and cells causes the breast to swell. Mm -hmm. Additionally, during the procedure, in order to protect the skin or the chest wall, depending on where the, the tumor is situated within the breast, we actually inject saline to buffer that area. Okay. So the combination of the saline and the infl inflammatory response causes a significant swelling of the breast. Mm -hmm. So the breast is quite swollen mm -hmm. immediately after the procedure. And that usually lasts, I would say about 10 to 14 days. Okay. Um, really by two weeks, the majority of that swelling is gone. Mm -hmm. um, so patients may feel a heaviness in the yeah. breast. They may feel a tightness. little bit of restriction in their shoulder tightness. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. But other than that, the recovery is incredible. Yeah. Um, one other thing that I'll mention, and this is, this is always astounding is after the procedure, that breast gets incredibly bruised. So, yeah. it, I mean, there's no nice way to say it. It looks like the patient's been hit by a truck, but time and time again, as horrible as it looks, every single patient is amazed that it doesn't hurt. It just looks awful. So, you, you know, know, really patients can get back to the majority of their activities very yeah. quickly. They yeah. do great. I'm glad that you pointed out all of those, uh, you know, the bruising and everything. I know when yeah. I had liposuction for my deep flap, I, to, I, I frequently tell women the same thing you just said, it goes away. And surprisingly, the first couple of days sore, yes, but each day gets better. But the bruising can be frightening, but it's the body's natural response. You know, Dr. Bednarski, I have to ask you right out loud, you have a lot to discuss. I, I really would like to invite you back at some point to talk more about this uh, in a podcast so that we can extend this conversation and really do a deeper dive. You've got a book out now too, then, and we'll put the information to that. Um, it's called Freeze Breast Cancer, and we'll put that information at the end of this video, but I am going to just do a verbal invite and thank you for this information today, because here's the thing, breast cancer is unique. No breast cancer is the same. And, and what you have given us today are options that women, you know, can look at and um, explore more with this cryo ablation. So thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. And Tara, I will take you up on that offer. I would love to talk some more about this incredibly exciting topic. All right. It's a done deal. I'll get, All you, right, on, it's a I'll date. get you on the schedule. <laughs> it is. Thank you so much. Thank you, Terry. Mm -hmm.